Hey there. Thank you for joining me again. Um, we're together discussing 10 visits. And when we were last together, we were discussing the client intake form and looking at all the various questions that are asked there and that we will be sharing with our clients in order to really know them and get an idea of their history. Um, the last question, uh, I take this form up to page four, and then um, the last question on, on my version of the form that is the page four, it might be different in Elizabeth Davis's book. Again, we use the intake form that is found in Elizabeth Davis's book, Heart and Hands. And um, on the page that is my page four of that document, um, there's a question about diet and exercise. And uh, I just want to go back a bit, actually, and say, um, I want to talk about active listening a bit. Um, my students often have a really hard time asking these questions, and they feel like, why do I have to ask all these personal questions, and da-da-da. And it feels invasive. And I remind students that, again, I mean, in other areas, this mama has asked, answered these questions for several people now, several um, health and support type people throughout her pregnancy, so it's not going to be unusual, really, for her to have to ask, answer them. And um, they are really important if to, to know her. If we've had years to know this family and to be in their acquaintanceship, we'd know the answers to these questions, but we don't. In order to really give them the, the, the support that they need, we need to know them more than on a surface level. And, you know, if a mama is wanting to have a natural birth, a vaginal birth, an unmedicated birth, but there are issues in her history that make that not possible for her, then we want to be the ones to help educate her and support her along ways that she could still have a more natural experience or help her to really see. Sometimes moms have a very um, deep distrust of the medical profession, so much so that um, they won't take advice from them that would actually be in their best interest to consider. We are not medical people. We don't diagnose or treat anything. But if you have a mom who's showing up with, you know, she's been diagnosed with preeclampsia, she has preeclampsia, um, all the various ways. We'll talk about preeclampsia a, a little later on, more in depth. But, you know, if she has unwavering preeclampsia, sky high uh, blood pressure, and she's coming to you and she's talking about an unmedicated, you know, birth, or, you know, a birth with no interventions. That is a pause. That's that's a pause. <laughs> you know the 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 safety of that. If you're talking about ensuring safety for mother and baby, the safety of that plan is definitely something to question. And you know there are steps that could be taken to see if it's possible for her to have as much of what she you know envisions as a natural experience as possible. Um, but we have to have we have to use wise judgment always. There are wide ranges uh, where it's incredibly possible. There, there are times when doctors jump, jump the gun and where their, re their recommendation is highly, highly medical. Um, and our job is to provide information so that moms can make really grounded decisions free from fear uh, with regard to their bodies and their birth experiences. So... It's important for us to gather this information in the most loving way possible. When we're listening, we are going to we are practicing what's called active listening. And that means that we speak very little. We ask the question, we listen very clearly. We don't interrupt the client when they're speaking unless it's to ask for a point of clarification. And something the client has said has confused us, we will say, excuse me, I am confused. Please explain this or that. But for the most part, we're giving them 
the gift of our time and the gift of our attention, which in this culture is like winning the lottery. No one listens to anybody. And if you're sitting there with the client while they're speaking and you're thinking about the next question that you have to ask, you're not listening to the client. Active listening means that you're breathing nice and deep, you're grounded, you are present, you're not thinking about what you have to do after the appointment, you're not thinking about how hard it was to get to the appointment. You are in the appointment. You are with this family. You are watching their body language. You're watching, you know, if you ask the question about, did you know, have you had a miscarriage? Does she cry? Does she look tense and numbed up, num numb and want to change the subject right away? All of these things are letting you know about the journey that your client has walked before she met you. And all of this information is incredibly important in order for you to serve her and her partner and her family moving forward. You want to take note without judgment of all of these things. Doing that creates an environment where the client feels very comfortable sharing all manner of things with you, and she should. She can feel free to share with you if there's been any abuse in her background, if she has been the victim of rape, if, you know, the, the couple is having a difficult time in their relationship right now, struggling with money, if they've been having arguments, um, if they're concerned about whether this is really a good time to have a baby. All of this being shared with you is not for you to fix it or, or do anything about it particularly, except maybe to make referrals to counseling that might be of assistance. But sometimes just being able to talk about that to you and to about, and being able to say that to you with her partner there or sometimes, you know, having appointments where it's just the mom or just the dad. Um, we want to have it, you want to create an environment where both parties of the relationship, whether it's mom and dad, mom and mom, or dad and dad, <laughs> that it, However, this beautiful family is configured, they feel safe to come to you and share their concerns to you. You are the support person for all of them. Um, I love when when partners squeal on their on their on their pregnant spouse. I love it. I love when the dad will come and say to me, "You know, she hasn't eaten anything today whatsoever," and so I can go and talk to her about that. It's very cute, and totally appropriate and wonderful like mommy what's up why aren't you eating Are you having a hard day can I fix something for you right now what can we do to, to make that better so you want to be part of the team and a trusted member of the family to a certain degree uh, where both both uh, members both parents feel really comfortable with you they could tell you anything and and um, you're all together in oneness to uh, walk together through the, the labor and delivery Active listening is a beautiful tool to use in your professional life and in your private life. It'll help uh, increase intimacy and connection between you and other human beings. Listening carefully, using I statements, breathing deeply, and actually paying attention to what's being said to you. Um, manna from heaven, let me tell you. With every visit, uh, we check in with clients regarding their diet. I find that diet is the most important thing. There's so much that we don't have control over in life and even in birth. Um, but we do have control of, over what we put in our mouths. And when you're building a little human being from scratch, the building blocks of that new little human being is the food and drink that the mom is putting into her body. Very often this is not, this is discounted or not given the incredible uh, urgency that it should have in my opinion. There's a lot of talk about taking prenatal vitamins and stuff like that and a woman's told well you should eat well but nobody's really taught what that means. What does it mean to eat well? Um, so we're going to talk about that uh, in our next little video but I wanted to say that it, at the end of every visit we ask our moms to write down what they've eaten for the past 24 hours starting from the time of your appointment and you work back to the, the day previous. Um, you want to see what we're going to talk about in the next video is five finger eating 
and you want to hear that the mom is eating this way, which is a good, abundant diet, an actual balanced diet full of real food, um, so that to, the, the, with nutrients in concentrations uh, and uh, rich enough to sustain her life and to help her body build this beautiful new life that then she has to give birth to. So she needs the strength and energy in her body, in the cells of her body, to be able to go through the rigors of birth. Um, I am running out of time again, so I'm going to say goodbye to you for now. We're going to talk a little bit more about the intake form in our next video, and we will begin to, I will go in depth into five-finger eating and what that means. Um, I thank you for being with me right now, and my phone's ringing, Er. But in any case, thank you for being with me. Thank you for walking through 10 visits. Hello? Hello?